From here on, nothing goes down unless I'm involved. No blackjack, no dope deals, no nothing. A nickel bag gets sold in the park. I want in. Yes, 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 yes. You know what it is. We are back again with another verified DB teach tape. It's your gracious host, Mr. VDB. Back once again to kick some game and kick some flavor for all my young DBs out there. Listen, I know it's been a minute. I know it's been a good little minute. Matter of fact, it's been a year and a half since I last uh, blessed the family with another verified DB teach tape. But nonetheless, we're back again. We're back at it like we never left it, family. And as a reminder, as a reminder, you should never depend on another man to help you put in the work. You have to put in the work yourself. So I hope over this last year and a half, you guys have still been studying film. You've still been on that field and you've still been getting active, okay, with the work. Because that's what it's going to take to be a verified DB out here in the streets, okay. So it's your gracious host, Mr. VDB. Nonetheless, it's been a long time, so let's get straight into it. Y'all know how we rockin'. So up first, we have uh, Mr. Ahmad Gardner, a.k.a. Sauce Gardner, uh, one of the top picks in this year's draft with the New York Jets. Very long, very rangy DB, a very athletic DB, and we're going to break down some of his film, just a little bit of his film, along with a, another young brother by the name of Kair Elam. So let's get straight into it, family. Now check it out. Off rip, y'all know how we rock him. Now I'm starting to film a little ahead of schedule. It's not at a, a station. They're not at a stationary position. It's already running during the play. But nonetheless, understanding one thing when we get up to the line, guys, that's positions of power. Okay, so am I inside leverage and my outside leverage? And I got to know that. I got to own that. And I got to play that. Remember, guys, you are in control. This receiver, he has to come into your house. He has to step in foot in your territory. Now, he only knows he knows the route to get there or the route he's going to take. Nonetheless, we know he has to come here. He has to step into your territory. So the biggest thing, guys, is to understand your position of power and be patient up front. So as you see right here, Sauce Gardner, very patient with his approach. Okay, he's working the inch back technique. Okay, very patient, very patient. Now, this is key. When he goes to make contact after he's patient at the line, notice he shuffles into his jam. He didn't cross over. He didn't open up the gate and just start running. He shuffled into the jam. Okay, guys, he shuffled into the jam. Let's play it back one more time. Okay, very patient with his inch pack, and boom, shuffles into the jam. Now, what that's going to do, that's very key because, as you're going to see at the end of the play, look how far the, uh, the receiver is, how wide he made the receiver get in running his route. So, shuffles into the receiver, gets some nice contact, and starts applying pressure. Once we make our contact, once we make the jam, now the name of the game is to apply pressure. And we really want to apply pressure to that hip. Apply pressure, apply pressure, widen him, widen him, widen him. Now, Third key, look outside in first, guys, especially on this fly route. I cannot stress this enough, guys. Whenever you're defending a go route, you always want to look outside first, then work your head around back in. So a lot of guys always ask me, Mr. BDB, what do you mean by working yourself outside first, working your head outside first? Look towards the sideline first, okay? That's going to give you a better angle to the ball. See his head, he turned outside first. He's got a better angle to the ball. You're able to locate that back shoulder. And if you can't see the ball turning outside in, that means the ball is coming towards over the top on the inside. All right? So turns outside in. It's able to locate the ball, understands it's a back shoulder, and then just make a play. Then just make a play, guys. Now let's, let's take it back one more time. Again, very patient, inch back technique, inch back technique, shuffles to the receiver, applies pressure. And I want you to notice something, guys. Turns outside in, but look how wide this receiver is. Even if he catches this ball, guys, if he catches this ball, he's most likely going to land out of bounds because he widened him so much. That came from doing one simple thing. 
That came from doing one simple thing, staying square at the line in this shuffle. Boom. This shuffle right here took him from the numbers all the way to the sideline. Okay? He shuffled into the jam, and then he applied pressure all the way down the field. So he's still leaning on him. He's still leaning on him. He's still leaning on him. Okay? Locates the ball. So even if he does catch this ball, guys, most likely he's going to land out of bounds. So that's the game within the game, guys, that I want you guys to master. All right? All right, now here we have Saucer and again uh, lined up against Notre Dame. Uh, so I want y'all to notice his footwork at the line again, understanding positions of power. That's the first thing every DB should know coming up to the line, especially in man-to-man -man coverage or even zone. What are my positions of power? Where is my help? Okay, so on this play, Sauce is lined up outside technique, which usually means you have help to the inside, okay? He's probably got a deep middle safety. He's probably got a linebacker help or one or the other. All right, so outside technique, Sauce he takes a little shuffle steps, able to get hands on the receiver. Now, this is key. Now, this is a bend route. When receivers are running bend route, the sole purpose of this is just to outrun you. They want to outrun you guys, okay? They're just running straight up away from you, all right? They're not trying to route you up. They're just really trying to beat you to this sideline. It's a foot race, okay? And they're betting on themselves. So one thing that Sauce does right here, he gets contact. He gets back to the hip, guys. He gets back to the hip. He's very physical, and he gets back to the hip. And this is very important because the hip almost acts as a magnet. Because he got back to the hip, psychologically, guys, you got to understand your mind. Your mind is like a processor. It's like a computer. Because he got to the hip, he's able to feel uh, the trajectory of the route. He's able to feel the angle the receiver's running at. Just from getting to the hip, just from getting that contact on the hip, and is almost able to sling his way back on the inside of the receiver. But that came from that hip to hip contact. That came from that hip to hip contact. Now, let me play it back one more time. Now, again, shuffle on the outside. Now, I see a lot of guys do this, they don't get to the hip, they just start running alongside the receiver they just start running alongside the receiver they never get to the hip once you get to the hip it's something crazy about your mind psychologically you're able to feel the route he's running feel the trajectory of the route or the angle that he's running at so sauce gardner touching him right here i know it seems simple and it seems crazy but he's able to feel okay the trajectory the angle that he's running at and undercut it okay able to fill it, undercut it, and make the play. Little things like that, guys. Getting to the hip is very important. And I know it seems simple. It seems like, oh, man, that, that doesn't mean anything. Your mind works in crazy ways, guys. Getting to the hip of receivers in the middle of their route, uh, at the top of their route, it tells you your body can feel the direction they're going, the angle that they're running at. Talk to any veteran DB, they'll tell you this. This is why so many people teach running into the receiver, filling the receiver, leaning on the receiver. These types of things help, guys. So excellently played by Sauce Gardner. But it's the little things like that that people never talk about. So on this play, we're breaking down our guy, Kair Elam. I believe, I hope I'm pronouncing the brother's name right. I believe he got drafted by the Buffalo Bills in the late first round. Excellent DB that was out of Florida. I believe he was a three-year starter out of Florida. So a veteran SEC DB. Now, one thing I like about this play is this comes from simply understanding your positions of power. Okay, Elam is outside leverage on this play. Outside leverage. And a lot of times, guys, even if you mess up, even if you don't get to the hip, even if you open the gate, if you just understand your positions of power, okay, you're going to be in a good position. So on this play, he's outside leverage. He practices the quick jam. Now, I don't like that he opened up his gate right here. I thought he could have stayed square and really rolled him inside, but still maintained his outside leverage. But nonetheless, he kept outside leverage. He quieted the quick jam, and he opened up his gate. So now right here, understanding his positions of power. Now, again, I would love for the brother to work towards this hip, really lean on him. Because, again, that's going to show you the angle. 
that's going to almost, your body's almost going to feel the route he's running. Okay? But nonetheless, understands his positions of power. It starts to cut off a little bit on the screen, but as you can see, he maintains his outside leverage right here. And because he understood his positions of power, he was able to make a play. He was able to make a play on the ball. So the ball is thrown. At this ball is 50-50. Go get it. Go get it. That just came from understanding your positions of power. So great job on that play. So that just shows you if you come into the line, the coach tells you have inside leverage, outside leverage, whatever, however you're coached to play on that particular play, maintain that leverage. Maintain your positions of power. Don't get greedy. Don't start doing your own thing. Don't start jumping inside, trying to jump routes. Maintain your positions of power. Okay, guys, that's very important. Coaches are telling you to play a certain technique for a reason. If they're telling you to play outside technique, because that usually means you have inside help. If they're telling you to play inside technique, you usually have outside help or over-the-top help, or they're telling you to push you to the sideline or receive it to the sideline, and the sideline is going to be your help. So things like that you have to think about, guys. It's a chess game out here. So here we have Elam. He's lined up against Virginia. This is from a couple years back uh, in one of the bowl games. I want you to notice the footwork. Now, right here, patience is your friends, guys. Understanding coming to the line inside technique, the receiver has to come to you. Stop being impatient. Stop being antsy at the line. Receiver has to come to you. Works his impact. Inch back technique, very patient. When a receiver starts to press him a little bit, boom, one, two. Okay, think of yourself as a boxer. Work that jab. The jab in boxing is a range finder. It's to make sure people know they don't come within a certain range, so you work that jab. You have to have that same mindset as a DB. Boom, excellent shooting of the hands. And because he shoots it so nicely and at the perfect range, he's still over top. Okay, right now the receiver is losing this battle. Trust me, the receiver coach, when he went back to the film room, is hollering at him right now. Okay, because he's losing this battle. The DB is still over top in great position. All right, fights to stay square, cutting off his route at this point, still in front of him, still squeezing him. And now at this point, because he's so far over the top, he's almost just backpedaling. This is just a jump ball. He didn't even have to open up because he stays square and he won at the line of scrimmage, guys. Stay square, stay patient at the line, won at the line of scrimmage. He didn't open up his gate. Stayed square. Now it's just backpedal judging the ball. It's a jump ball. The receiver doesn't even know where the ball is, guys. Let's play that back one more time. The receiver doesn't even know where the ball is. He's playing the ball himself. He's running this route for him. And again, this is just a jump ball. Great job at by him. Now this came again from staying square at the line, staying patient. When the receiver broke that range, shooting that jab out at him and just making a play. Just making a play. So right here, guys, this is where we have a little advanced film work right here. I want you guys to become very familiar with this defensive technique. This is called bison, all right? This is a coverage. It's a popular coverage in the secondary. We called it bison at my school. It might be called, I've heard it called monster, uh, other different coverages at other schools, but the technique, uh, the concept remains the same. So what you have on this, you have your safety, your nickel corner, and your cornerback. You're playing three receivers. Now, starting with the safety in your nickel corner. Your safety in your nickel corner on this play, everybody's looking at the number three, okay? Both the nickel corner and the safety. You're looking at the number three. Three is going to tell you what to do. If three runs outside, if he runs five yards and up, out, nickel's going to pick him up, okay? If he runs anything vertical or bend route across the middle, your safety's going to pick him up. So three is going to tell the nickel and the safety what to do. Now, Elam out here, he's locked up with one. He's in man-to-man -man coverage. If he was out wider, he would probably be up in a press technique, but they're in kind of a bunch set. So he's back. He's giving him a little space. He understands the goal line is right here. All right, so let's go ahead and play this. Now, boom. All right, so what we see right here, three eliminated himself. He eliminated himself for the safety. All right, so now the safety automatically knows the nickel is going to pick up this flat guy. The nickel is going to pick up this flat guy because he ran flat. All right, so this is an easy read. Automatically, once you see three is running flat, his attention automatically went to number two. 
Now number two's his guy, which he's in perfect position for. Okay, your nickel corner's in perfect position for this flat route. And again, your cornerback is locked up with the three. Excuse me, with the one. So boom, everybody's sitting on it in perfect position. Elam's able to make a play on it. That's how you execute that, guys. That's how you execute that. Here's a closer angle from the cornerback's position. Again, you can play this two ways depending on how you would coach. Sometimes I was coached uh, to look at the, uh, the quarterback's drop. On this one, he didn't really take a drop, so we automatically think in quick game. If the, if the quarterback, you're reading the quarterback in zone, sometimes you read him in off man. If he, takes a, he doesn't take a drop, we automatically think in quick game. If he takes a two- to three-step drop from the shotgun position, we think in intermediate to deep ball. But pretty much we kind of sitting on everything because we're so close to the goal line, guys. You're not really worried about a 60-yard pass because it's only 20 yards to go. So he's just playing straight up man-to-man -man on him, very patient, no need to fly out of there. And, again, just makes a hell of a break on the ball. Hell of a break on the ball. Just be patient. I want y'all to notice a little something as well, guys. We don't talk about this enough. He comes in with that left arm wrapped around the receiver, and the right arm is going for the ball. Okay? This is how you secure the tackle and have an arm to make a play on the ball. So even if you miss, you want to make the tackle, guys. So great job, Ailan, on this play.